Have you ever wondered why airplanes wings are shaped the way they are? Well in this video I'm going to explain the very important reason as to why airplanes wings are shaped the way that they are. In my video talking about Bernoulli's principle I mentioned that the shape of the wing is the reason that the aircraft is able to produce lift. So in this video I'm going to go into more detail about the shape of the wing and how they're designed. An airfoil is the cross-sectional area of a wing, or in other words, it's the shape of the wing when you're looking at it from the side. To really understand airfoils, I'm going to explain some of their basic characteristics. The first of these characteristics is called cord length. The cord length is the length of the airfoil from the front of the wing, known as the leading edge, to the back of the wing, called the trailing edge. The curvature of an airfoil is known as camber. The camber of an airfoil is usually quantified as a percentage of the cord length. Camber is perhaps the most defining characteristic of an airfoil. If an airfoil is curved upwards, it's said to be positively cambered. An airfoil with positive camber can produce lift at level flight. The angle at which an aircraft is flying is known as the angle of attack. So in other words, at steady level flight, your angle of attack is zero. Airfoils that have no camber are said to be symmetric. Symmetric airfoils produce no lift when the angle of attack is zero. We can demonstrate this phenomenon graphically with the use of what's known as a coefficient of lift. The coefficient of lift is a measurement of lift that takes into consideration the dynamic pressure and the area of the wing. Using the coefficient of lift can give us a better idea of how the wing actually operates at different angles of attack. When we graph the coefficient of lift versus the angle of attack, we get a graph that looks like this. This graph shows us three different airfoils, one with high amount of camber, one with a small amount of camber, and a symmetric airfoil. As we can see in this graph, any airfoil that has a camber will generate lift even when it's at angle of attack zero. But for a symmetric airfoil, the coefficient of lift is always zero when the angle of attack is also zero. Many modern fighter jets use symmetric airfoils this is done for many reasons. The first of these reasons is that these aircraft can actually produce immense amounts of thrust when compared to their weight. This is known as the thrust to weight ratio. Since these aircraft have such a high thrust to weight ratio, they don't need to generate lift when their angle of attack is at zero. The second reason that having a symmetric airfoil can be beneficial to these modern fighter jets is because it makes them more maneuverable and allows them to perform stunts like flying upside down. Looking back at these coefficient of lift plots, we can also glean another important characteristic of airfoils. If you notice in all of these plots, there's a point at which the lift drops off significantly. As the angle of attack increases, less and less air is attached to the top surface of the wing. And when this angle of attack is reached, the air on the top surface of the wing becomes so turbulent that it's no longer able to generate enough lift to maintain steady level flight. This can lead to what's known as a stall and the airplane can literally fall out of the sky. The only way to recover from a stall is to increase the airflow over the top surface of the wing again. Normally this is done by pitching the aircraft down and increasing your airspeed velocity, which leads us to our third reason that symmetric airfoils are beneficial to fighter jets. Symmetric airfoils have higher stall angles than cambered airfoils. This allows for those fighter jets to climb more aggressively without the fear of stalling. The reason that the higher cambered airfoils have lower stall angles is due to drag. With the higher camber comes higher lift, but also comes more drag because the surface is more curved, which causes more skin friction drag. If we look at this plot of drag versus angle of attack, we'll see almost the same trend as we see for the coefficient of lift versus alpha plot. As your angle of attack increases, so does your drag. And this is due to the fact that as you increase your angle of attack, you're pitching the airplane up which causes more drag because you're exposing more of the surface of the wing to the incoming air. Eventually the drag becomes too much for the airfoil to handle and you have flow separation. Since both lift and drag increase with angle of attack, it becomes a delicate balance for airplanes with cambered airfoils. Commercial aircraft manufacturers have developed a way that airplanes can benefit from both a low cambered airfoil and a high camber airfoil 
with the same plane. During takeoff and landing, an airplane needs to generate high amounts of lift. And one way to generate a lot of lift is to increase your angle of attack. But we can't exceed the stall angle for the airfoil. So these airplanes employ the use of control surfaces known as slaps and flats, which I discussed in a previous video. Slats are a control surface that extend from the leading edge of the airplane, and flaps extend from the trailing edge of the airplane and deflect downwards. The first important thing that these control surfaces do is increase the area of the wing, which generates more lift. Or as NASA so eloquently put it in this wonderful graphic, double the area, double the lift. The second very important thing that these control surfaces do is increase the camber of the airfoil. And I hope that if you've learned anything from this video, it's higher camber equals more lift. The third thing that these control surfaces enhance is the stall angle. As we can see in these graphs, as we extend the flaps, it increases the stall angle just a little bit. And when we use the flaps and the slats together, it increases the stall angle even further. This allows the aircraft to pitch up or increase its angle of attack even further, thus generating even more lift. We could use math to solve all these points, but why would we do that when we can just make a computer do it? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Unless your computer is how. There's a specific type of software that is made to analyze aerodynamics. These types of programs are known as computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. There are some free CFD programs that you can download from the internet, such as XFOIL or XFLR5, both of which I got to play around with while doing my first aerodynamics course. Here are some of the results that I generated while using XFLR5. As you can see, we can use this software to generate some of the same plots that we were talking about earlier. There is another way to analyze airfoils, but this one is experimentally, in a wind tunnel. We also got to play around with a couple of small wind tunnels during my studies at the University of Central Florida. What you're seeing here is a process known as flow visualization. This process can be very important to aerospace engineers as they can physically see how the airflow interacts with the airfoil. So if you found this video informative, please give it a like. Share it with your friends that like airplanes as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and Godspeed.